Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem non-decreasing array. We're given an array of n integers and we wanna check if the array can become a non-decreasing array if we change at most one element. That means we're allowed to change one element in the array if we want to, but we don't have to change any elements. And non-decreasing in this case is pretty straightforward. Two adjacent elements can be equal to each other or the right element has to be greater than the left element or they're equal to each other, like I said. And that condition has to be true for every pair of adjacent elements in the array. So it seems simple enough. Let's just go pair by pair in the array. So the first example, we look at the first pair of integers. They don't satisfy the condition. The right element is smaller than the left element. So what should we do in this case? By looking at it, the simple thing to do is decrease the left element. In this case, we can decrease it to one, or we could even decrease it to two, because that's the lowest value that we have to make it be for the condition to be satisfied. So that's what I'm gonna prefer to do. Why decrease it to one if we don't have do. And so we used up our single change that we're allowed to do. So now we're not allowed to change any elements. Let's look at the next pair, two and three. They already satisfy the condition. So we're good. Let's look at the second example. By the way, we only had to change one element. So this was true. It can be changed to a non-decreasing array. In the second example, we look at the first two values. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna decrease the left one to as low as we have to. In this case, we'll make it two because that's what the right element is. So now we have a two over here, but we're gonna look at the next two elements. Again, we uh, see that they violate the comparison. But in this case, we already used up our change. What we would want to do at this point is take our two and change it to the lowest value that we have to make it, which would be a one, which would make uh, then the two adjacent values satisfy the comparison. But we can't do that, so we have to return false. But another thing you might have noticed here even if we hadn't used up our comparison, if we have an array that looks like two, two, one, we look at the first two values, they're okay. We look at the next two values. Oh, we gotta decrease this one, right? Well, can we change it to a one? Well, that satisfies these two, but we forgot about all the previous values. Just because these two values satisfy the condition doesn't necessarily mean the array is in an increasing order. We know for sure that this portion of the array is an increasing order. Now there's no elements over here, but there could have been. But by the time we get here, let's assume we know that this portion is an increasing order. And what we did now is we made these two also in increasing order. The last thing that we have to check to know that the whole array is in increasing order is the previous value that we were at and this value uh, over here. So this is something that's really easy to miss with this problem. Now let's actually go back to the first example where we continue that kind of train of thought I was going on. So I'm taking this example and all I'm doing is adding a three to it at the beginning. We're gonna continue our original algorithm, keeping that point that I've just made in mind. So what we're gonna do is have two pointers and we're gonna iterate pair by pair. We're gonna look at these two values. They do satisfy the comparison. They're in, in non-decreasing order. So now we continue. We're gonna look at these two values. Are they in non-decreasing order? No, they're not. So far up until this point, whenever we find non-decreasing elements, what, we, what we've done so far is take the left element and decrease it. And we actually have good reason to do that. That's the smart thing to do if we have a choice because we actually have two choices here to make these two elements in non-decreasing order. We can change this to a two or we can increase the right element and make it, let's say a four. We're making it a four to match this one because we don't wanna make it larger than we have to. Because if we take this four and actually make it a five, what if there's elements over here that are equal to four and in that case, we just made this larger than it needed to be. If we had made it a four, then this would have been a non-decreasing order, but we made it too big when we didn't have to, and then we messed up the whole array. So that's why I'm only increasing it as much as we need to, which is four. And by the same line of thought, I'm only decreasing the left element as much as we need to, to a two, because there might be, let's say a two on the left side. In this case, we are in non-decreasing order. 
if we had a two over here and for some reason, wild reason, I decide to make this a negative eight for no reason. Now these are in non-decreasing order, but now these are not in non-decreasing order. So that's why I'm only decreasing it as much as we need to. But again, we have two choices and I favor this choice. I favor decreasing the left element. The reason is because we don't know what's going to come up ahead but we want to maximize the possibilities. Every element that comes ahead in the array has to be greater than or equal to all the previous values. If we take this four and decrease it to a two, we have more possibilities. We're basically giving ourselves more room. Even a three will end up being greater than a two. But if I do the opposite, if I change this to a four, now we made the, the maximum of the, this portion of the array larger. We made it a four and now it's not satisfying the condition. And we kind of decreased the possibilities that we had up ahead. So what I'm saying here is when we have a choice, we want to decrease the left element. But in this case, we actually don't have a choice because the smaller of these two values, two is smaller than the previous maximum that we have in the previous portion of the array. Two is smaller than three. So we don't have a choice here. We would like to change this to a two, but we can't. So what we end up doing is changing this to a four. So now, so far, the array is in non-decreasing order, but we run into a problem up ahead with these two elements. These are in non-decreasing order and we already used our change. So at this point, we have to return false. So that's pretty much the entire algorithm. It's just a couple edge cases that you have to worry about, which we can handle with some if else statements. It's just a little bit tricky. So the overall runtime of the algorithm is going to be big of, and we only have to iterate through the array once the memory complexity is going to be big of one. We're not using any extra memory. We just have two pointers that we're using. Okay. Now let's code it up. Let's code it up. Remember we need to keep track of if we've already changed a variable or not, or a value in the array or not. I'm going to just use a Boolean for that. So initially we'll say changed is false. If we do change it, we'll have to reassign this to be true. And then we're going to iterate through every pair of values in the array. To iterate through every value in the array, we would iterate through the length of the array. But if we want to go through every pair, we're going to do length minus one. So what we're going to do is check every pair of values, nums of i. Is it uh, in non-decreasing order, meaning is it less than or equal to i plus one? If this is the case, that's the good case. We don't have to do anything. So what I'm going to do here to make the code clean is just continue to the next iteration of the loop. If that's not the case though, and suppose we've already changed a variable or a value before, that means changed is equal to true, then we can't change another one. This is the case where we have to return false. Okay, so now we took care of the simple cases, but we have to change one of the values. Remember, we want to change, we want to decrease the left element or value if we have a choice. And how do we know if we're allowed to change the left element or not? Suppose we were at these two elements. What we would want to do is change this four to a two, but we can't do that because this value on the right is actually smaller than this one. So if we change this to a two to match this one over here, they're gonna be in non-decreasing order. So what we have to do is check that this one is greater than or equal to this one. If that is the case, then this one can be uh, assigned to whatever this one is assigned to. So what we're gonna say, and by the way, this is where our i is going to be and this is where our i plus one is going to be just to make it even more simple so if nums of i plus one is greater than or equal to nums of i minus one then we're going to say nums of i this one is going to be assigned to be whatever this one is set to be uh, but in this case we see that's clearly not the case so in the else case we want to decrease this one, but we have no choice but to increase this one. So we say nums of i plus one is going to be nums of i. That's pretty much the opposite of this line over here. But let's consider the case where we actually don't even have this three at all. So that would look like this. In this case, what we're going to end up doing is comparing this to i minus one when that doesn't even exist. So we're going to go out of bounds. By the way, what would we even want to do in this case? In this case, we are allowed to decrease the left one. So that's exactly what we'd want to do. So we would want the else to execute. So to do that, we can basically say if 
Well, my neighbors just started mowing their lawn. Hopefully you can't hear that too well. But if I is equal to zero or this is the case, by doing or we say, if this is true, then immediately execute this. But if this is not true, then we actually have to check this. If this ends up being true, then we execute this. If neither of them are true, then we end up executing this. This basically allows us to not end up going out of bounds. So we don't get an error at runtime. But uh, last thing we have to do is after we end up changing a variable, we have to change our changed variable to be true to keep track of that. And then uh, if we end up exiting the for loop, then we are allowed to return true because that means the array was in non-decreasing order. If it's in decreasing order, then we'll have to return false over here. But now let's run it to make sure that it works. Whoops, I forgot to get rid of this line, which I was using for illustration purposes. Let's run it again. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and check out neatcode.io, which is a free resource to prepare for coding interviews. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.